The Safe Campus and Scientific Advisory Task Force developed recommendations by starting with the evidence. We started with um, searching rigorous literature reviews, challenging our assumptions about what we think works, what we think might work, and um, took, a, took a close look at the evidence. And where we encountered the limits of the evidence, we relied on the expertise of a really wide array of, of faculty from across the university. So we have faculty from with expertise in infectious disease, in virology, in, um, in facilities management, in epidemiology, um, in public health, in law and medical ethics. So it was, it was quite a, and that's just beginning to scratch the surface uh, in, in nursing and mental health and, and well-being. Well, really confident masks work to, to um, curtail community transmission. And I, I picked that as a particular example because it underscores part of our process, which was to look at the data as it came in, look at the evidence as it came in. And that's something that we're continuing to do. The best way to keep yourself safe and to keep other people safe around you is to do those things that sound like their advice from your grandmother. Wash your hands, 20 seconds, warm soap and water, wear a mask whenever you're in a public setting. So I'm in my office right now with my door closed. I don't need to wear a mask in this context. I'm not putting anybody at risk. But anytime I walk out to the, to the restroom uh, past my assistant, I have a mask on to protect other people and keep six feet of distance wherever you possibly can. Uh, and I wanna underscore that this isn't just um, sage advice that's been passed down over generations. This is, not, uh, this, is, this is not just popular wisdom. There's a good evidence base supporting um, these measures as being the cornerstones of not just personal protection, but community protection. The monitoring of pandemic related conditions will continue uh, to, and I would even say beyond the point where we feel like there's a threat from the COVID-19 pandemic. The most important thing for people to understand about the necessity of these public health precautions is that even if we don't feel like we personally need them, they are the foundation for protecting other people. Um, the, the, the thing about a, an infectious disease pandemic is you can feel fine, but you can be a risk to other people, particularly COVID-19. I could feel fine today, but I could end up symptomatic tomorrow. So the things that I do when I'm feeling well are going to be the things that affect other people. So uh, one of our, our leaders in the college likes to, to, to say it this way. Your health is my health, and my health is your health. Um, these, it's, it's not just about what I need to do to keep myself safe. These are the things I need to do to keep other people safe. And that's the thing I want us to remember. But this is a moment in which if we don't follow the guidelines, we're all going to go home. And that's not what anybody wants. I can understand that a student might ask, so why do I have to do this when I'm not at high risk? Why do I have to wear a mask? Why do I have to sit six feet from somebody in my classroom? Why does my roommate have to, to do this? We're, we're, not a, we're not a risk. And the answer is, I mean, honestly, this is what it takes to keep the university open. Um, because some of your faculty members are gonna be at higher risk. Um, staff at the university are gonna be at higher risk. Um, those are the people that we rely on to teach our courses, to run our programs, and in order to have a face-to-face, -face, even if it's a covered face-to-face, on-campus experience, we need to keep the people who run the university, who make education possible, as safe as possible.